These are not at all to scale, but the moon's orbit around the Earth is elliptical. And when the moon is closest to the Earth in its orbit, is said to be at perigee. And when the moon is farthest from the Earth in its orbit, it's said to be at apogee. Now let's find out what kinds of things happen when the moon is at perigee or apogee. Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures with me, Sula. This episode is about things that happen when the moon is at perigee or apogee. The moon takes 27.5 days to orbit the Earth and the orbit of the moon is elliptical so that during the orbit, the moon is sometimes closer to the Earth and this is called perigee. The moon's gravity and the elliptical orbit of the moon around the Earth have a substantial effect on the Earth's tides. Once a month, at perigee, when the moon is closest to Earth, the tide generating forces are higher than usual, producing above average ranges in the tides. About two weeks later, at apogee, when the moon is farthest from the Earth, the lunar tide raising force is smaller and the tidal ranges are less than average. When the moon is at a right angle to the sun at the first and third quarter phases is when we have neap tides, when there is very little change between high tide and low tide. Also, when the sun, the moon, and the earth are lined up at the time of the new moon or the full moon, the gravity of the sun impacts the Earth's tides and is additive to the lunar effects on tides, creating extra high high tides and very low low tides. And these are called spring tides. Recently, there was a lot of media attention about a rare supermoon blue moon on August the 30th, 2023. So I'll tell you a little bit about blue moon. The technical definition of a blue moon from the Maine Farmer's Almanac is the third full moon in an astronomical season, having four full moons. But blue moon has come to mean the second full moon in the same month. Since the moon takes 27.5 days to orbit the Earth, and since all the months except February are 30 or 31 days, a blue moon will occur fairly regularly and the next time there will be two full moons in the same month will be August 2024. The moon doesn't actually appear blue when there's a blue moon. However, the moon can appear blue when there are large amounts of smoke and dust high in the atmosphere that will filter out longer wavelengths such as red and yellow. And this occurred after the volcanic eruption of Krakatoa Volcano in Indonesia in 1883. And during this time, people around the world reported seeing strangely colored sunsets and a moon that appeared blue. And that's when the term once in a blue moon came to mean a rare event. However, the term blue moon had been used long before 1883 as early as the late 1500s by William Shakespeare, and once in a blue moon was used to mean something rare or impossible. Actually, usage of the term blue moon to refer to the second full moon in a month occurred due to an error in Sky and Telescope magazine in the March 1946 issue, where the author misinterpreted the definition from the Maine Farmer's Almanac of the third full moon of four in an astronomical season to say that it meant the second full moon in a month. But this definition has taken hold in the lexicon of American English to become the dominant definition of a blue moon. And now most people mean the second full moon in the same month when they say blue moon. But the full moon that occurred on August the 30th, 2023, 
was not just a blue moon by that definition that's commonly accepted now, but what the media, YouTubers, non-astronomers, and lots of other people insist on calling a supermoon as well. Most astronomers cringe when they hear the term supermoon being used because the term originates in astrology. Unlike astronomy, which is a field of science, astrology is a type of pseudoscience that studies the movements and positions of celestial bodies and interprets them as influencing human affairs and the natural world. The term supermoon was coined in 1977 by astrologer Richard Noley in his Dell Horoscope magazine. He said it was when a full moon or a new moon occurs when the moon is at or near perigee. The technical term for when the new moon or full moon occurs when the moon is at perigee or near perigee is a perigee syzygy. Perigee is when the moon is closest to Earth in its elliptical orbit, causing it to be slightly larger than usual in apparent size as seen from us on Earth, maybe appearing 10% larger. The media, probably with good intentions <laughs> to increase their ratings, <laughs> loves to excite the public about real or imagined or misnamed <laughs> upcoming celestial events such as the much anticipated reappearance in 1986 of Comet Halley, which did reach magnitude three or four, I think, but it was treated with such hyperbole by the media that it could only be a disappointment to the public. And it was. Then there was the supposed naked eye comet of January, 2023, Comet C 2022 E3ZTF, that was supposed to be naked eye. It did reach magnitude 5.8, but it was not naked eye. <laughs> Believe me, I tried. <laughs> then there was the supposed aurora that was going to occur in July 2023 in North America, as far south as Montana, that never materialized, just to name a few. However, the media was correct that there would be what is known colloquially as a super blue moon on August 30th, 2023. But if you want to be precise, it was the second full moon of the month of August, and you can call that a blue moon since that is the generally accepted definition of blue moon these days. And it was a perigee syzygy of the full moon. Or you can just call it a super moon and a blue moon because those terms seem to be here to stay and have become entrenched in the English lexicon. But personally, <laughs> I think I'll call the full moon at perigee the perigee syzygy because I think it sounds cool <laughs> and it makes a great scrabble word when you have bad letters or a lot of Y's. <laughs> and because although I'm just an amateur astronomer, I'm not a professional astronomer, I don't want to be associated <laughs> with astrology. And because I just like being precise. But if you want to call it a super moon, that's fine by me. The word is like the clouds. It won't go away just because I want it to. So on August the 30th, the weather forecast was bad, but since my view to the east is blocked by a hillside full of tall trees anyway, I decided to drive out on a country road to try to see if I could see the blue moon perigee syzygy. And here's what I saw. So that was pretty neat, but you know what's even neater is when the moon is at or near apogee, which is the farthest point from the earth, and the moon gets precisely lined up between the sun and the earth, 
but it's not quite big enough to cover the sun, and that's when we get an annular solar eclipse. And it just so happens one is coming on October 14, 2023. There will be an annular solar eclipse across much of North America. And if you're lucky enough to be in the path, be sure to get your solar glasses out because you cannot look at an annular solar eclipse with your naked eye at any time. But at this time, when the moon is at apogee and quite, cannot quite cover the sun, it will create a ring of fire. And if you miss that, the moon will be at perigee again, April 8, 2024, and it won't be a blue moon or a perigee syzygy, but it'll be something far cooler and something we all agree is called a total solar eclipse. Because the moon will be at perigee, it will cover the sun and it will appear to be the same size as the sun. And the moon, the sun, and the earth will be all lined up precisely, creating a total solar eclipse that will cross much of North America. So this is a perigee not to be missed. If you do miss it, there will be more total solar eclipses as there are total solar eclipses somewhere on Earth every 18 months. They might be in the middle of the oceans, but they might be somewhere electrifying like over the pyramids of Egypt in 2027. Now you know what a perigee syzygy is and what kinds of things can happen when the moon is at perigee and at apogee. That's it for now. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you soon. Until then, get outside and enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever. Sula, signing off. <laughs>